Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming. Um, first, let me just say <clears throat> what an absolute privilege it is to be entrusted to lead this club. I want to thank Merritt for the opportunity and for the faith and confidence he's shown in me over my time here. And I especially want to thank the staff for their trust and support. We have an incredibly talented and dedicated group of people here, and it's my privilege to be a part of that. I'm a fourth generation Oregonian, so I know how much this club means to this city and this state. To be the first woman asked to lead it is both my honor and an incredible responsibility. I think there's a lot of exciting opportunities ahead for us, and I'm absolutely thrilled to be a part of that really bright future. All right, we'll open questions. Heather, Nick Krupke with Fox 12, just okay. generically, what is this opportunity for you if all the years you've spent to build towards this way? I'm not sure when this came on your radar, but what just is this overall for you to be able to lead this club right now? Well, it's almost hard to put into words. It's obviously um, a once in a lifetime opportunity to come back to my home state and lead a club that means this much to so many people. Um, I think it's an opportunity for me to pay forward um, a lot of the support that I've had over the years. <clears throat> I've spent my career in politics, big corporate law firms, and sports, so I sort of hit the triumvirate of male-dominated industries. And um, But every step of the way, I've been really fortunate to work with and be supported by really amazing women, and I think this is my chance to um, pay that forward to the women at this club and in our leagues and in our community. Um, and I'm really lucky to have a great group of female leaders here to do that with me. Heather, congratulations. Um, one of the through lines of the challenges that this club has faced has been issues involving women feeling safe in the workplace, women um, feeling equitable in the workplace. I'm, I'm wondering, um, from your vantage point, what ideas, what strategies you might have as far as addressing those issues? Sure. I, you know, we've made a lot of really positive and significant changes here over the last year. I think we have a new restructured management team that is really focused on continuing to do the work to grow and improve as an organization. I think a sentiment that I've heard here from our staff over the last four months is that a lot of what you read in the media and on Twitter doesn't feel like the organization we work for. Um, but I think it's incumbent on us to continue to do the work to support women in the workplace, to support our players on the field. And um, I feel really confident that we have the team in place to do that. I have a Paul Andrews tribute. Um, two things. One, talk about your background in sports and how you got involved in sports jobs. And then what are one or two of your priorities now that you've got the full-time gig? Sure. So I, I started in sports um, at a law firm as outside counsel, and I think for me, the intersection of law and politics kind of felt right in sports. This is, you know, clubs like this are really, um, in a lot of ways, a public trust. So it's always been um, a passion of mine to kind of figure out how to balance those competing interests. And um, obviously, my experience at the NFL gave me a pretty good background in the business of sports generally. Um, but I think this is a club that has a lot of momentum right now. Our ticket sales are outpacing last season already. Uh, I feel like we're finally getting back to where we were pre-pandemic from a business perspective. Um, you know, I think the Apple TV deal is going to be really transformational for the league. Um, and Leagues Cup this summer is going to be a great opportunity for us to introduce this club to a new group of fans. So. I think for me, the focus and priority this year is really to, to continue to do what we do best, which is deliver a world-class product for our fans here at Providence Park and, and now around the world. Um, along those same lines, you know, a lot of, there's been a lot of discontent among supporters and, and disillusionment um, with the club. What would, what would be your message to supporters at this point? Well, like I said, we've made a lot of um, really significant and positive changes here over the last year. I think this new leadership team is going to continue to do that work, and I think we should be given a chance to prove that. But I also think that this is a club that has done a tremendous amount of good in this community over the years, and that's the legacy that we're going to bring forward. I think for us, our focus and priority is on making sure that we do the work to make 
this a world-class team on the pitch and a world-class organization off of it. Hi, Wesley Ogle with K2 News. Um, you've mentioned the new leadership team. Is there anything specific you can give us of what you will be doing to right some of the wrongs that have happened in the last few years? And same thing, a message to supporters, something you're going to do that people can see that you are making a change. Sure. So, I mean, obviously, over the past year, we've done a lot to bolster our anti-harassment and anti-discrimination training. We've instituted anonymous um, reporting lines. Um, and we're continuing that work this year. We just launched a task force of, that's comprised of both internal and external participants that will be reviewing the league level reports and providing us recommendations on what we need to do as a club to ensure that we're compliant with the club specific recommendations in those reports. Um, but I would also say that you know systemic problems require systemic solutions. And that's the work that the NWSL and US soccer are, are going to be undertaking. And as we've said before, we are absolutely committed to being part of that solution. You, your, most of your comments have been related to the business side. <laughs> I'm wondering, are you gonna be involved at all in the, in the athletics kind of side? Are you gonna be involved in player personnel decisions? Yeah, so um, Ned and Karina both will report to me, but obviously they have incredibly distinguished careers and backgrounds of their own, so they operate quite independently as well. Uh, Eel High grad, right? Yes. What year parts. was that? Oh, that's a rude question. <laughs> that wasn't where I was going with that. 1994. Okay, cool. So, been around, you know the Timbers other be NASL, USL, MLS. What was your fandom? knowledge, support of this club in whatever iteration it was at the time? Well, I mean, I grew up an American football fan, I have to say. So, you know, I was a duck. My dad was a duck. Um, you know, we watched a lot of NFL growing up. We were Beavers fans. That's that's my memory of Providence Park is coming to watch the Portland um, Beavers. It probably wasn't until I met my husband, uh, you know, however many years ago that was now that I really became a real soccer fan. He's uh, he got me hooked, so. <laughs> Other questions? What are, what are his favorite teams? Who are, who are his, other than the Timbers? <laughs> yeah, uh, Timbers, Thorns, Tottenham Hotspur. Tottenham. We're a Hotspur family, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, wow. Don't want to break anything. <laughs> um, how does it feel to be one of the highest ranking women in Oregon sports executive history? It's, I mean, it's almost surreal, honestly. It's, um, it's an incredible honor. I think um, there's a lot of progress that's been made in sports. Um, we, you know, here at the Timbers have the first head athletic, female head athletic trainer in MLS and Stephanie Ludwig. I see the Hillsborough Hops just hired a female general manager. So um, we're making good progress. Um, and you know, like I said, it's an incredible opportunity to, to pay forward a lot of the support and mentorship that I've had over the years. Other questions? Oh, to your left. I'm following up on that. Just who are some of those mentors, A and B? Have you had discussions with your peers, the other four women, I believe, in MLS, who are in your position? And if so, what kind of advice have you gotten? Yeah. Well, I mean, I was obviously lucky enough to start out my career with a mentor in Hillary Clinton, which is a pretty incredible um, start. So, um, but I, you know, I worked with a lot of really incredible women at um, at the NFL, including um, Anastasia Danius, who's now the general counsel of MLS, and she's been a, a huge source of support and and guidance through all of this. Um, but I was saying to um, my staff this morning that. Uh, something that was really touching for me yesterday was how many people reached out from all walks of my life. Um, and the sentiment was largely how proud they were. And that, I think, is such a uniquely female thing. I think that is so uplifting to hear so many women that I'd worked with over the years express that kind of pride in, in my accomplishments. Anything else? <laughs> Not yet, but I saw someone on Twitter um, found a, a photo of me with her um, 
I don't think I had ever even seen that photo. It was so neat. That was a really special one. <laughs> Um, obviously, there were, you know, there's a lot of pressure for Merritt Paulson to sell the team. He's announced that they are selling the team. How's it been working with him? And it sounds like he's the one who picked you to be the next CEO. What's that relationship been like? You know, I think we're really lucky to have an owner in Merritt that cares so passionately about this club. He's so supportive and encouraging of the work we do here every day. And this is really his life's work. And I think it's an incredible privilege for us to be able to, to take that forward. And it's no small thing to entrust someone new with that. Um, and so I, I feel like he is incredibly supportive of me and, and our priorities and vision for his club.